Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Journey to the Savage Planet. If you enjoy this video, please become a cruise ship captain and then only give people life jackets who subscribe to me. Then sink the boat as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. A massive thanks to the legends at 505 Games for reaching out to me and sponsoring this video. The game's available to download on Xbox, PS4 and PC right now. So I spawn in as my avatar wakes from a nap. Naps not only increase alertness and creativity, they can also reduce stress. I guess this is our spacecraft and I'll be playing cooperatively today with my boy Stealth Omato whose character's looking really skinny, so we head over to the vending machine to get him a little snack. Kidding, Mato is the only little snack on this spaceship. It also seems to be more broken than my parents' marriage and on the pin board there's a flyer that a guy called Bill Chank has put up and he is looking for love. He specifies he's a gentleman by day and a bad boy by night. He's not lying either. I can tell by his beard that Bill here is an absolute freak in the sheets. Anyway, it's time to exit the ship and explore. Basically, we are a new recruit for the fourth best space exploration company and our goal is to try and figure out if this planet is fit for humans. Marto gets busy fixing the ship and I get busy slapping him in the back of the head. I give the javelin a quick diagnostic scan and learn that it really has seen better days. I'm starting to realise why we're the fourth best interstellar space exploration company and not the best. We crashed our spacecraft and as the only two survivors all we've done so far is slap each other silly. It literally only took two minutes of us being stranded to resort to kinky violence. We make our way into the icy cave and are ambushed by some chubby owls. They're probably just scared and afraid, so we kill them quickly by kicking them into the air. The last thing they see before they splat onto the ground is the world cruelly spinning out of control underneath them. Wholesome content. We're blocked from moving forward by some purple crystals, so we use the resources we've gathered to craft a nomad pistol back at the ship. The pistol will be perfect for furthering our expedition. I also use this opportunity to gun down Marto because last week he sent me a message saying, Pelly, you're not even in my top 100 YouTubers. Man, I wish I was playing this game with Mr. Steal Your Girl, aka Bill Chank. We emerge from the icy caves and the Journey to the Savage Planet title appears in the world. I wish I had cinematic motivational messages like this appearing in my real day to day life. Like if big letters popped up and were like, hey Jeff, your nose might be exceptionally big but so is your heart. Anyway, we begin exploring and our first inclination is to just start shooting all the plants. Us humans did this on Earth and it wasn't like there was any repercussions, lol, good luck Generation Z. Some of the plants even have hallucinogenic effects, so I can confirm the dumb little birds from earlier enjoy getting absolutely lit. Stealth Omato somehow dies from said birds and so I go down to save him and immediately after I revive the big dog he shoots me with his pistol which I respect. We continue slapping birds and eating orange slime but then we discover a new biome and decide to take an epic shortcut. I wouldn't often advise jumping off a cliff unless you're hung like say Bill Chank but I decide to send it and remarkably using a well-timed clamber I survive. I hate to toot my own horn, but I'm eSports ready. Somebody sign me. The world is aesthetically pleasing to my beady bloodshot eyes, except for the flying octopuses, so we kill them too. Never trust an octopus, because once they started making their way out of the oceans and into the anime, you knew it was no longer family-friendly content. I ask Marto to try and jump this gap as it's where we need to go. And he does. This doesn't go particularly well for him. I find some fresh water and waterfalls, so you know that I now love this planet. They say all you need is love, but that's quite frankly bullshit. All you need is fresh drinkable water. So basically, we need to try and climb to the top of this tower and determine if we are truly alone here. Or is there other intelligent life? We find the glimmering cave of wonder, which is actually what my uncle nicknamed his basement. There are little cave birds down here, and so we kill them all. Seriously, we're on a rampage. These little malakas are going to be extinct in about 10 minutes. The game goes full Indiana Jones, and we locate a temple shrine. I extract what I can only assume is real fruit, apple and black currant juice from the shrine which will allow us to craft jump thrusters. Stealth Omato and I slap each other silly to celebrate but somehow both die at the exact same time meaning we can't revive each other and thus spawn back at the ship. 
You'd think given how long we've gamed together, we would have established some sort of unity, but yeah, nah. We use the 3D printer to craft the thrusters and I adapt to using them like a pelican to water. Kidding, I disappoint, just like I disappointed my entire family when I said I was going to try and be a YouTuber. I mean, it's a step up from being a cryptocurrency trader, but a step down from dealing weed. We get the hang of the jet thrusters and keep exploring this whimsical planet. Well, at least it was whimsical, right up until I kick one of the birds and it gets stuck into this vine plant of death and minced up into tiny little pieces. Wow. The game went from peaceful to full-blown chubby bird saw simulator in 10 seconds, which I respect. We continue climbing the tower, thrusting around and occasionally slapping each other down for a cheap, well-earned laugh. All of a sudden though, we come across an actual dangerous opponent. Balanced fights are lame, I was enjoying statistically mincing small birds, but I guess we've got to take these spinny boys on. I try to cheese the fight by standing up on these rocks out of harm's way, but these dodgy rhinos are way too smart for that, and again, I fall to my death. As I respawn back at the ship, I can't help but feel lucky, because I get to see Bill Chenk's face again, what a modern day hero. We kill the beast, and to celebrate, aggressively teabag the spot where it died. We then attempt something beautiful, something revolutionary. The exclusive, synchronized teabag that not many epic gamers have successfully been able to pull off. You guys are witnessing history being made right here. We retrieve the alloy, and put it into the Javelin's Hoover 9000 as we begin to repair our spacecraft. Once we get this bad boy up and running, we should be ready to explore each other's bodies, I mean explore other planets. As we continue climbing, the platforming sections get harder, and well let's just say, platforming games aren't our strong suit. It was pretty hilarious watching Mato try and make these jumps, though I am editing out my mistakes and showcasing his because I'm just that kind of friend. Moments later, we encounter our toughest opponent yet. A strange living eye with a laser scanner that fires high explosive cluster bombs out of its head that kill you instantly. So to answer our hypothesis of determining if this planet is suitable for a human settlement, I'm going to pencil in a soft yes. I figure out how to take the big girl down by simply poking my fingers into its eye. I wonder if this strategy could be used on actual battlefields. Like if a soldier has an RPG, you could just charge him down and then poke his eyeball. GG well played. We make our way through the lava caves, nut on each other, and then buy a proton tether. The proton tether is great, as it really makes you feel like you're exploring the savage planet. This has been Jeff for IGN, we'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and send me your iCloud login details so I can look at your risky photos. Alright, remember the birds from earlier? Well now they have armour, and I'll tell you what, they are angry and now quite strong. We really have been tormenting these little critters, but like, come on, we were just joking around. It was just a joke when I kicked your cousin into the mincing plant. Why do you have to be such a big baby about it? The grumpy birds, dare I say angry birds, were the least of our worries though, because do you remember Mr. Krabs from SpongeBob SquarePants? Well, life after the Krabby Patty wasn't always good for old mate Krabsy. This is what eight years of steroid abuse looks like, and it's not a pretty sight, is it? Everybody always asked how the Krabby Patties were made, but never asked how Mr. Krabs was going. And this is what happens when you lack empathy. People turn into monsters and try to burn you alive with molten lava. We continue exploring the world, finding new areas. The platforming sections are really enjoyable, as watching Mato continually fall to his death never gets old. Seriously, I think the more we played, the worse he got at these sections, it was quite hilarious. Like we had to navigate these mushrooms, and the one he was on just sank, and I've never seen a man's spirit break so quickly. But then all of a sudden, he did it. 18 years of gaming all paid off at once, as my boy began leaping like the 29th of February. I'm kidding, he he fell to his death again. I'm actually sorry for roasting you about your fine motor skills so much this video bro, but how can I not? We keep forging forward, and the wild beasts we encountered kept getting more angry. Like bruh, we are just trying to wipe out all the native species on this planet using barbaric violence, so that eventually we can build a Whole Foods here and sell grapefruit granola to insecure university students. What's the problem? My favourite ability we unlocked was the launch booster, which let us do these super jumps to high places. This let us access random walkways and live our best lives. Now though, Mato and I have to set 
settle who's the better space recruit. Obviously, the only way to measure such a thing is a slap off. I don't know if you have seen slap competitions, but I watched a Siberian slap off once and it was perhaps the most majestic thing I've ever seen. Anyway, we did jump slap shots, drop slap shots, it was the sweatiest slap off of the decade and somehow I narrowly came out on top. Until of course I revive Marto and he instantly kills me and then proceeds to flex on my corpse until I respawn. You know what, I'm going to say it. Marto is just a poor man's Bill Chank. Thanks again to 505 Games for sponsoring your boy. Thanks to you legends for watching the video and thanks to those who support my channel through Patreon. Until next time and as always, stay classy.